Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and have a very good day. Today, I'm going to demonstrate on Structural Engineering Laboratory CES 511 in Determinate Trust Level 1. As an introduction, in statics, a structure is statically indeterminate when the static equilibrium equation are insufficient for determining the internal forces and reaction on that structure. In order to analyze the indeterminate structures, consideration in the material properties and compatibility in deformations are taken to solve statically indeterminate. A statically indeterminate truss can be determined using the formula as below. DOI is equal to M plus R minus 2J plus C. When the value of DOI is more than zero, therefore the truss is statically indeterminate. Where M is the member, R is the reaction, J is the joint, C is the internal hinge. The figure shows the apparatus for indeterminate truss experimental setup, where it consists of the member, the joint, the load cell, and the reaction or the support system. The objective of this experiment is to compare the member forces of indeterminate truss determined in theoretical structural analysis with respect to experimental result. At the end of this experiment, students should be able to find the member forces in the truss system by using the superposition method and describe the principle of superposition approach in solving indeterminate truss problem. As a problem statement, a truss is a structure that is made of straight slender bar that are joined together to form a pattern of triangles. Trusses are usually designed to transmit forces over relatively long span. Common example of trusses are bridge trusses and roof trusses. Figure shows different types of trusses which are warren truss, subdivided warren truss, double warren truss and quadrilateral warren truss that is normally used for the structural system. Today, we are going to demonstrate on indeterminate truss experiment. Before that, I am going to introduce the apparatus. Here are the apparatus that we have for indeterminate truss experiment. Before that, we have to know each of the members or each of the elements that we have here. So, the first one is the support system that we have here. So, we have two types. We have two support here. Here is the roller support. Here is the pin support. Next, we have to know and count how many members that we have for this truss. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight members. So for this truss, we have eight members. And then okay, for, for the joint, we have one, two, three, four, five joint. Okay. And then here are the load cell. Okay. So at the load cell, it's already not the numbers of the members. So for example, here is number two, 
there is number seven, six, four, five, and this is number one. Here are the handler that we are going to use to apply load to this truss. In order to record the data, we use this computer or this software to record the data. So we can set the interval of the time for the load that will be read by this equipment. So in my case here, so I'm going to set three second interval to read the data. So after we set the specific time interval here in three seconds, then we click start. Then we have to click this override box in order to make sure that there is no data redundant from previous experiment. Then we click OK. So this window shows the reading for each of the channel. Channel 0 is for the load that we're going to apply. This is channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4, channel 5, channel 6, and channel 7. So you have to refer the position of channel 1 is at which members of the truss. So we know that, for example, here, the reading 68.607 is the red line Okay, therefore this is a channel 1. So channel 2 is represented by 22.896 is this green line. Channel 3 is minus 13. So this line. Okay. And then uh, channel 0 is represented by this dotted line. Okay. Channel 4. Okay, negative 30. So this one is a purple line and then you have to uh, check one by one so the, re the, the graph here represent which channel in order to apply load to the truss so we have to turn the handle anti-clockwise and then we read Okay, the data here. Okay, so it shows the incremental of the load or incremental of the internal forces here. So here is the time, here is the internal forces that is produced by the truss. So we may increase load. Okay, then we will see the different pattern or the increasing of the internal forces here. Okay. So the data recorded here is at every 3 seconds. And then we may increase another load here. And then we will see the increase of the internal forces here. So the maximum load that we can apply to this truss equipment or this truss apparatus is 200 50 Newton. So in order to increase load, okay, to apply load to the truss, for example, here, okay, we see the incremental of the internal forces here, and then after the three second is already flat, then we can apply another load here. Okay, so that's why the reading here is increasing. And then after we see that another 3 seconds or more than that is already flat, then we can apply another load here. Okay. And then... Ten. Okay. We can increase the load by 10 times. So it means that we will have this incremental of load for the 10 time. Then you may stop your experiment. And then you have to capture every single increment of the uh, results so in order for you to record each of the value here. Okay.
after experimental has been done, all the data has been recorded, so you have to prepare the report. The figure shows the overall free body diagram of the truss, the measurement and also the numbers of the member. So you have to understand the truss. So there is a three reaction which is two horizontal reaction and one vertical reaction. Then you have to analyze the internal forces of the member by using the superposition method to compare with the result that you obtain from the experiment. The table shows one of the example that has been done in the experiment and it shows the load that we apply and the member forces for each of the members and 10 numbers of reading has been recorded and we have to analyze this result. So in order for you to analyze the result, each group is required to prepare the experimental report based on the data given where you have to analyze and interpret the data by using the superposition method to compare between the theoretical and the experiment and include all the analysis and calculation for the needed answer. Beside that, in the conclusion, you have to discuss of your laboratory work and should be reflecting with respect to the objective of this experimental study. Here are some of the application that we can see for the indeterminate truss. The first one, we use a steel roof truss to support the roof system. Second one, it is a timber roof truss that is also used to support the roof. And last but not least, is a steel truss for the bridges okay, to support the load of the railway tracks. So some of it is also used to support the road or the normal road system okay so that's it for the indeterminate trust experimental work thank you